hey y'all here we are with the hate street voice and we're talking to uh this guy named bob weir oh yeah but uh behind me over it's always hard to point in the right direction when you're doing the zoom crap over here right i'm sticking, I'm sticking right. my my hand in uh ken kesey's ear um there's brian rohan and ken kesey and brian rohan god rest his soul uh i just wanted you to uh bobby if you would uh Tell me what Rohan meant to you. Well, he was he was a lawyer, and he'd been through school. He'd been through he, you know, been through the bar and all that kind of stuff. And he could do that kind of thing. And he, he was the first of those guys I ever ran into because when I ran into him, I first met him, I was I think eighteen. Yeah. And um, and um, I was running with the pranksters, and Rohan was. Uh, Kesey's lawyer, I guess, and and God knows we needed one every now and again. And <laughs> he wasn't exactly a a criminal lawyer, but he knew all the he knew where to go to get criminal lawyers because we needed them from time to time yeah. to get our off our hot busts and stuff like that, um, or to deal with them. And uh, I my guess, I don't know for sure, but my guess is he had something to do with Kesey uh, selling his. Uh, the screen rights to his books and stuff like that. I, I don't know where he actually came into the picture. Well, tell me what's going on here because you are waving. Can you see that? You are, you're adulating him. You are like, hey, do you see that? Oh, let's see. What are you doing there? Um, you're like, hey, look at how, how old are you there, motherfucker? Look at you. You are a kid. Yeah, I was 18 or 19. And there's Rock Scully next to you and Pigpen, of course. And I don't know who the guy with the striped shirt looks like Phil, but it's not. And then, of course, Brian Rohan. Who's the guy? In the, oh, that's uh, the guy. In the, the blonde guy is uh, Bob Matthews. Okay. I'm pretty sure. All right. And then, of course, Brian Rohan, who right. you're pointing to, like, hello, take care of us. Right. Well, I think he was, he was, looking for a, a record deal for us. And I think he had, I don't remember for sure. It's all right. But I'm pretty sure he's the guy who, who got us our first record deal. That was the kind of thing he did. I think he came into the picture uh, with Kesey. And I think he got, uh, you know, he signed Kesey's, uh, fil the film rights to Kesey's books. Yeah. Oh, for uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that, that right. little ditty. Yeah, that Done. small little ditty. And sometimes a great notion as well. Okay, so we love Brian Rohan, and we, I just wanted to start there with you and he thank you for guy. that. Oh yeah, he was. Hey, can I say this about my magazine? He was. <laughs> I met him uh, in the second edition, and uh, he says, "Hey, I dig this magazine." I said, "Hey, you're a newcomer. I'll give it to you for a hundred bucks an ad." He says, how much are they? I said, 350. He says, you are the worst businesswoman ever. And here's three. He wrote me a check like right there on a dime because he believed in uh, my trying to take care of the community no matter where it right. is, you know. And uh, Rohan just wanted, he was the lawyer for the people. Um, there was an article written about him uh, posthumous uh, where it said the dope lawyer. But he wasn't a dope lawyer. He was a person that took care of people. Right, I, I think he hung with uh, with uh, Michael Stepanian. Oh yeah, they were yeah yeah. And uh, and Michael Stepanian got us off our pot bus because he was a criminal lawyer. Yeah. But uh, I don't think Brian actually handled that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now let's talk about this woman. Remember this lady? She's still around. It's Peggy Caserta. All right. Yeah. Peggy. Yeah. Peggy had a great little shop down. Uh, you know, I blew all my uh, all my cash down there. <laughs> no, you didn't. She gave you free clothing. Well, she did, but I also <laughs> bought stuff down there. Okay, well, <laughs> when you guys were broke, she's like, "Oh, you can't wear that to the uh, to the to the photo shoot. You guys look like crap." <laughs> well, I, mean, I think she was pretty smart about that. She figured if uh, if we were wearing that stuff, uh, the kids would buy it. And, uh, you know, so that was good thinking. Um, yeah. And she, you know, she didn't, she, she gave, she was real good about it. I, I don't think she gave, gave us everything, yeah. uh, you know, we saw in that, in that shop, but I uh, wanted, we walked out of the shop with, but uh, she, you know, she, she took care of us for sure. 
Yeah, there's this. Also, also a fun hang. Oh yeah, I bet. I bet there's this one picture where she's uh, in her shop, or you guys are in her shop. She's like, he's like scratching his head. Let me see if I can find it. Damn it, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, this picture is that's oh, classic. That yeah. Well, that's not the guy scratching his head. How old are you there, Bobby? Uh, 18 or 19. And so this is on the corner in front of Ben and Jerry's these days? I, yeah. I mean, ben and Jerry's wasn't there. Yeah, well, yeah, that was the, what was it called then? It was the uh, free shop? Who knows? I don't remember what it was. I, I don't remember all, all the stuff that... Uh, I guess my question is to you, you were 17, 18 when you were here, man. It was, right. you know, there's there's a lot of people and I live a block away. So I see everything and I've been here 30 years now and um, wow. everybody's like, oh, well that's over. You know, those days are over and there's a magic still here there they, and it, it yeah. lingers. Well, you know, the rents are, the rents are still pretty, uh, reasonable compared to the rest of the city, at least. But the whole thing about uh, the Haight Ashbury, uh, the the reason that Haight Ashbury, the reason that uh, San Francisco in general attracted all those folks is because the rents were cheap. Yeah. San Francisco had cheap rents back yeah. uh, back in that day, and the artist community uh, took advantage of that. They all fell together, and uh, and well, it was. Uh, a UCSF um, student ghetto and an artist ghetto, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, a, a, a scuffling artist ghetto, and, uh, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you yeah, I was listening to your uh, interview or not interview, but your hang with your neighbor Sammy Hagar, and he was like, you were saying. Um, it was just everywhere you went, there was like an artist, somebody was painting, there was a lot of creativity. Right, in yeah. 66, 67. And I would like to say the next edition of my magazine, everybody is going to be called A Renaissance is Rumbling. Just because the Grateful Dead aren't here, and I do believe that we can't recapture, but I do believe there's a lot of young people that really want to express themselves and have things to say. I'm almost starting to cry because I, I think there's a space here in the hate where if people want to express themselves, we're so excited about that. And I wanted you to speak to that. And thank you for being with me, Bobby. I really yeah. thank you. Really a pleasure. Yeah. Like you were 17, 18 when you came here, you know? I was 18, yeah. 18. Oh, you old man. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 18. Well, I, I was well into my 18th year. I was three or four months in. Really? I, and you came from uh, Palo Alto. We know that, right? Yeah, Atherton, but yeah. Atherton, you know, down there. Uh, and then the, the, the third thing I wanted to speak to was this man. Oh, well, there is this man, which you were probably too young to know, right? I can't quite. Oh, there we are. Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I that know, was Jerry's stuff. I, I think Jerry might have met him, but... Uh, the beatniks and all of that. You he didn't, was, you were too young. before us. Yeah. All right. Well, and then what the other guy I was looking for in my little search for cool people. He was uh, revered, I'll say that. Everybody yeah. knew him. Did you, did you read the beatniks? Was that part of your thing? What were you reading those days? I wasn't reading. But, uh, <laughs> you were busy of, playing guitar and fucking, right? <laughs> Sorry. Right, all that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> and one of them was, was living with me. Uh, uh, it was my roommate. Uh, Neil Cassidy was... Uh, he was my He was your roommate? At, uh, at uh, 17 Ashbury, yeah. Yeah. How'd that go? Can you tell me a story about that? Well, he, he kept me up at night. Um, <laughs> I didn't get a whole hell of a lot of sleep. I probably, you know, I was probably still in my growing years and I probably didn't grow as tall as I could have but uh, what uh, would you say was that what was the takeaway from Cassidy what what did he give you well he I mean, fearlessness was he fearless well I, he was absolutely fearless but yeah. I think the reason was because he could see through time uh I, you know he could drive 
this is not an exaggeration. He could drive, I, I was in a car with him do, when he was doing this. He, he could drive through rush hour traffic at like five o'clock. Uh, the guys that sent us on an errand, uh, Cassidy and me, you know, the, the band, you, you go out and get, uh, go to this store and get, go to the, uh, this store across town and get this. And uh, at, uh, at five o'clock in rush hour, and we'd drive at 50, 60 miles an hour, never stop for a red light or a, just, a, a stop sign. Just uh, like this, driving, just going. Just going, you know, on the wrong side of the street, on the side <laughs> of the McNally yeah. told me it was the scariest drive he's ever had. So yeah, I've, I... <laughs> and, um, I, you know, and at the same time he had, uh, you know, there were three of us, he had his girlfriend. And um, you know, so he had one hand on the wheel one hand feeling her up and one hand playing the buttons on the radio. And uh, and he was getting the radio, the radio was having a conversation with my <laughs> voice. Um, it was the, the radio Were there was, drugs you know, involved, he, Bob? Were there drugs involved? No, no, no? I was, uh, I, yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, on a trip. I, I was macrobiotic at the time. <laughs> okay, well that's I, 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 I was eating yeah. rice and vegetables. And, uh, and, and, uh, but, uh, you know, and I was living with Neil and, uh, wow. You know, it was, it was an education. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure that I could see through time, but he could, he could, the reason he could drive there is because he could be in the right place at, at the right time, wow. no matter what he did. Um, wow. I, I don't know how to better explain it, but I'm going to have to, I'm running a book and I'm going to have to figure out how to explain Neil, as best I can, though a lot of people have tried to do that in their books. Um, but I'm going to take a swing at it. Really? 